So far, we've learned about molarity and how to calculate the number of moles of solute when we're given the volume of the solution and its concentration in molarity, which is really just a conversion factor to get from volume to moles. In this video, we'll be building on this idea and we'll see another scenario of what happens when we mix solutions and a reaction takes place. Consider the following problem. What happens when we mix a 100 milliliter sample of a 0.15 molar solution of sodium chloride with 50 milliliters of a 0.25 molar solution of silver nitrate? It seems straightforward, but it's hiding a lot. Let's jump in. We haven't seen a problem like this before, so what should we do? That's right, more beakers. Fair warning though, most chemistry problems in the real world start with drawing beakers, so we need to get really good and really fast at doing this. Let's break up the problem and tackle each beaker separately. Looking at this part of the problem, what's in the beaker? Remember that sodium chloride is a soluble ionic compound and ionic compounds split up into ions when dissolved in water. Your textbook will have rules that you can use to determine if a given ionic compound is soluble. One rule to remember is that ionic compounds of alkali metals like sodium will be soluble. When we multiply the volume by the molarity, we get that there are 0.015 moles of sodium chloride in the 100 milliliter solution, so our beaker has 0.015 moles of sodium ions and 0.015 moles of chloride ions. This is our first beaker. What about this part of the problem? What's in the beaker here? Silver nitrate is also a soluble ionic compound. Nitrate compounds are soluble, so the silver nitrate will also break up into ions when dissolved. To get how many moles of each ion are in our beaker, we'll multiply the volume by the molarity of the solution. We get that there are 0.0125 moles of silver nitrate in the 50 milliliters, which means that our beaker should have 0.0125 moles of silver ions and 0.0125 moles of nitrate ions in our second beaker. But what happens when we mix the contents of the beakers together? Well, when we combine a solution with a volume of 100 milliliters and another solution with a volume of 50 milliliters, the total volume of our new solution is 150 milliliters. The number of moles of each ion, however, doesn't change. We still have the same amount of each ion. The only thing we changed was that we put them in a new beaker with a larger total volume. Concentration, whether given in molarity or in grams per milliliter, changes when volume changes. In this case, the number of moles of each ion stays the same, but we change the total volume of the solution. The change in volume changes the concentration of each ion in our beaker. Sometimes, like we saw in another video, nothing happens and ions don't come together to form a precipitate when two solutions are mixed together. However, in this new solution, the silver ions and the chloride ions will come together to form a solid precipitate, silver chloride. What is the balanced net ionic precipitation reaction? Remember, the other ions in the beaker, sodium and nitrate, don't do anything. They're soluble, so they're never included in our chemical reaction. After all, reactions are there to tell you what's changing. The sodium and nitrate ions are not changing, so the correct answer is this one. Silver ions plus chloride ions react to make solid silver chloride. We're so close. We know what we started with in our beaker. That was step one. We know what chemistry is going to happen, the precipitation reaction, and that's step two. The third and final step is to solve the problem. For that, we have to talk about limiting reagents. We see that there are different amounts of silver ions and chloride ions in our solution, which means that one of these ions is the limiting reagent. One of them is going to run out first during the reaction. Which one is it? We need one silver ion and one chloride ion to come together to form silver chloride. This means that they come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. The limiting reagent is the one that runs out first, so it will be the species that we have less of. We only have 0.0125 moles of silver ions compared to 0.015 moles of chloride ions, so silver is our limiting reagent and is consumed completely. Let's start with a new beaker for what will happen at the end of the reaction. We know that the volume stays the same and the number of moles of nitrate and sodium ions won't change. Let's add those here. Also, we just determined that there won't be any silver ions left, so let's put zero moles of silver ions in our beaker just to help us keep track. We also know that there will be some solid silver chloride precipitate. Let's draw that on the bottom of the beaker as a clump of solid. But how much will we make? Since silver ions are the limiting reagent, we start with that. 0.0125 moles of silver ions. The reaction stoichiometry tells us that we make one mole of silver chloride for every one mole of silver ions. That means that we'll make 0.0125 moles of silver chloride. Let's add that to the bottom of the beaker. All that's left is to determine how many moles of chloride ions will be left in the beaker. What do you predict about the moles of chloride ions? We started with 0.015 moles of chloride ion and some of it reacts with the silver to form the precipitate so there will be less than 0.015 moles left. But how much? Because silver ions and chloride ions reacted in a one-to-one -one ratio, we only used up 0.0125 moles of chloride ions. 
This means that we have 0.0025 moles of chloride ions left over. Let's add that to our beaker, and now we're done. This new beaker can answer any question we throw at it. For example, what is the concentration of chloride ion remaining in the solution? The new concentration of chloride ions is 0.0167 molar. Our new beaker says that we have 0.0025 moles of chloride ions remaining, and that the total volume is 150 milliliters, or 0.150 liters. When we divide the number of moles by the new volume, we get that the concentration of chloride ions in the new solution is 0.0167 molar. We know that since silver ions were our limiting reagent, all of it reacted and its concentration in our solution is now 0 molar. But what about the sodium ion concentration? The moles of sodium ions hasn't changed from the beginning of the problem. There's still 0.015 moles, but the volume is larger now that we mix the two solutions, so the concentration is lower. What's the new concentration of sodium ions? To find the sodium ion concentration in molarity, we look to our new beaker. We will divide the number of moles, 0.0150 moles of sodium, by the volume, 0.150 liters. This means that the new concentration of sodium ions is 0.10 molar. Now calculate the concentration of nitrate ions in our final solution. Just like the sodium ions, nitrate is a spectator ion. It didn't react and so the number of moles of nitrate stayed the same when we put the two solutions together. However, the volume changed to 0.150 liters like we said before. This means that we will divide 0.0125 moles by 0.150 liters to get that the new concentration of nitrate ions is 0.083 molar. Remember, anytime you see a problem like this, you know what to do. Draw a beaker. If a reaction takes place, then you can use the contents of that beaker to figure out what is made and what is left behind. If you do this, then you'll always be in good shape.